This semester, we're going to be using the Kimmel textbook called Tools for Business Decision Making. Chapter 1 is an introductory overview of the four financial statements. There are six learning objectives. In this particular video, we're going to focus on the first three. Uh, describe the primary forms of business organization, identify users and uses of accounting information, explain the three principal types of business activity. Uh, actually, learning objective number four is probably the most important uh, of all of the learning objectives, really having a good handle on the financial statements, but we will get to that in the second part. Uh, if I kind of want to, if we want to sneak a peek at, you know, what's the big picture of that's all in chapter one, uh, it's really kind of connected along with those learning objectives. And so we're going to focus on the first three here. Uh, forms of business organization, users of the in financial information, and business activities. And then part two, we'll do this last component. There basically are three primary forms of business. The first one is a sole proprietorship. That's when there's one owner uh, of the business. Hair, hair styling salons, uh, oil and lube places, auto repair. So often those are one owner. Uh, and set up as a sole proprietorship. They're easy to get started, so they're simple to establish. The owner has absolutely control of the business, and there are tax advantages because the business income flows through to the owner, who will then pay uh, personal income tax on that business income. So again, the income flows through the business to the owner, who then pays tax income taxes on that income. If there's more than one partner, uh, then it's a partnership. And those, those businesses are also simple to establish. Uh, you share control of the business with others. It has the advantage of the various partners bring different skills and resources to the business, so that can be uh, an advantage. Of course, the downside, is, as well as um, when I, we think about shared control, that can be a good thing, but also a lot of partnerships uh, dismantle because the partners can't get along, so that's a little bit of a disadvantage. But also one of the advantages of the partnership, just like the sole proprietorship, are the tax advantages. Uh, here again, the income of the business will flow through to each of the partners who, who then, each of those partners will pay income tax uh, on the business income. So they'll pay personal income tax. There are common disadvantages for sole proprietorships and partnerships. The owners are personally liable for the business debts. Uh, financing may be difficult to obtain. And then uh, transfer of ownership may be difficult uh, is, uh, of uh, transferring that out. The third kind of business form of business is a corporation. There are various kinds of corporations. We're just looking at one in general right now. Uh, they're easier to transfer ownership because you're just buying and selling sh stock. Uh, to one of the, the owners or the investors buy and sell stock among themselves. It's easier to raise funds uh, and there's no personal liability. On the downside, there's unfavorable tax treatment for corporations because the corporation is considered a legal entity. So the business, the corporation will pay, pay taxes on that business income. So there will be a business income tax paid at the corporate level, and then if those earnings are distributed to the owners, which is a dividend, but if the earnings are distributed, then the owners, which are the shareholders, will pay personal income tax on, on that uh, income. So that's often referred to as a double taxation for corporations. The corporation pays taxes on its income, and then any of that income that's distributed to the owners, the owners also again pay income tax, personal income tax on that income. So again, there's the three general forms of business organizations. This course is going to primarily focus on the corporate form of business. That's going to really, you're going to see the whole semester will very much focus on the corporate form. All right, well let's kind of look at the role of accounting uh, in our financial markets. When a company uh, begins or if it wants to expand it needs money to get going and there basically are two groups outside of the company where you can find money uh, and those are investors and creditors. Uh, investors buy ownership 
uh, particularly stock in the business when it's a corporation, and creditors lend money, such as a bank. So, uh, so again, so we basically have you know our banks, which are our creditors, and our investors, which might look like you and I, or it could actually be a corporate investor, uh, or it can be individuals. But in order to make these investing and lending decisions, the investors and creditors need information that will be useful to them. So the company is responsible for generating the financial statements. The financial statements are one piece of information that the investors and creditors use, but they're a significant piece. So the financial statements contain relevant economic information. So that economic information is both relevant, right, it's useful in making those decisions, and that information needs to be reliable, meaning that you can count on it. So the investors and creditors study the financial statements. Um, so they're going to read the financial statements and make their investing and lending decision. Uh, okay, now, uh, one of the concerns, I see I've already uh, opened up the independent certified public accountant, but that, that third party plays an important role here because uh, the company is, one, is going to try to, you know, convey a very rosy picture. It's, to me, this, the company and the investor and creditor relationships is sort of like dating. The company wants to look as attractive as possible. So that's where the independent CPA comes into play. The independent CPA is going to come in and essentially vouch for these financial statements. So the independent certified public accountant is serving the public, that's those investors and creditors, which might be you and, you and I, uh, so that we can rely on this information contained in the financial statements and make sound investment and lending decisions. Now that does, now I do want to make one point. The CPA is vouching that this information in these financial statements is relevant, it's useful, and it's reliable. So in essence, they're vouching for the numbers on those financial statements. They are not vouching for the health of the company. The investors and creditors are responsible for reading these financial statements and after reading them, being able to judge whether the company is healthy or not. That is not something the CPA does. They're merely saying whether the statements are, can be relied upon or whether you know, they're fake, that sort of thing. Okay, so let's look at, you know, uh, the users and uses of financial information. Basically, the purpose of financial information is to provide input for decision making. And we saw that on the prior screen. Investors and creditors are the two primary external users or readers of the financial statements and they're going to rely on that financial information for making their lending and investing decisions. So then we want to think of accounting. It's actually an information system. And that system identifies, it's going to record, and it will communicate the economic events of an organization to those that are interested. So the users of the accounting information fall into two primary groups, internal and external. Internal users uh, of accounting information inside the company include various man managers throughout, such as marketing managers who need to know what price will maximize the company's net income, or maybe human resource managers. Human resource managers may ask the question, can we afford to give employees pay raises this year? That's a financial decision. Or finance managers. Uh, they need to know, is there cash in the bank? Is, is the cash in the bank sufficient to pay dividends to stockholders? And of course, also top management. Top management wants to know, you know, which product line is most profitable? What product should be eliminated? So the big thing, uh, bottom line here, is that, you know, I really want you to see that accounting is used across the organization. It's really just not an isolated area and, that only accountants understand. If you're a manager in the organization uh, and across the organization, you need to understand accounting. 
And so you're going to find having a solid understanding of accounting uh, will help you, even if you are not an accounting major. You'll find it to be uh, very useful in your career. External users are outside the company. The two primary external users are investors and creditors, and we've seen this on prior slides. So investors are our current, or they could be potential owners. They want to know if the company is earning satisfa satisfactory income. How does the company compare in size and profitability with competitors? Should they buy, sell, or hold their stock? The creditors lend money to the company. Examples of creditors are banks, could be suppliers of goods to the company. The suppliers loan money to the company so that they can buy their goods. And they want to know if the company will be able to pay its debts as they come due, or how risky is the company. And then other external users include the Internal Revenue Service, Securities Exchange Commission, labor unions, customers, they basically want to know if the company is complying with particular rules and regulations. Does the company pay its taxes? Can the company afford to pay wage increases? Will the company stand behind its warranties? So accounting knowledge and skills uh, are required in all of this, these areas. Ethics are very important in financial reporting or financial accounting. Uh, at, uh, the United States regulators and lawmakers were very concerned that the economy would, would suffer if investors lost confidence in corporate accounting because of unethical financial reporting. And we have seen this to be the case. Uh, we had Enron and WorldCom in the early 2001, 2002 uh, that occurred. Congress passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. Uh, which had a big impact on accounting as well as business in general. And essentially the outcome of Sarbanes-Oxley is that there's more effective financial reporting uh, and that we do have an understanding that to be effective that financial reporting depends on sound ethical behavior. So uh, one thing about Sarbanes-Oxley Act, and sometimes it's called SOX, S-O-X, uh, is that it requires top management Top management has to certify the accuracy of the financial statements. And there are very severe penalties put into place for financial fraud now. And it also requires more independence, uh, auditor independence from the client. All businesses are involved in three primary types of activity. And we're really going to try to evolve, you know, study this semester and think about these three business activities financing activities, investing, and operating. And so the accounting information system is going to keep track of each uh, of the results of each of these business activities. Uh, financing activities. Basically, there's two primary sources of outside funds. And we saw this earlier, right? It's from the investors and the creditors. So if it's from the creditors, that's debt financing. The company's borrowing money. And the amounts owed to these creditors are called liabilities. Liabilities are actually obligations of the organization. So if the party to whom the amounts are owed are creditors, uh, examples are notes payable, I can go. notes payable, which is a bank loan, or bonds payable. Bonds uh, are actually, when we issue debt, uh, if we issue debt, we sell bonds. Bonds often are referred to as debt security. Uh, so they're security instruments, so they're debt security instruments. And uh, those are two, two types of, of liabilities, borrowing money at the bank or issuing bonds. Payments to creditors are considered financing activity. So if I borrow money or if I pay back them what I owe to the creditors, all of that is a finance, or all of those are considered financing activities. Uh, the other way uh, to raise funds is by issuing shares of stock of cash to the investors. So cash will come in, but if we pay money to the stockholders, uh, that's called a dividend, but that's also considered an investing activity. So 
Assume you have extra money to invest. How would you prefer to invest your money? Would you consider loaning money to a corporation, right, and be a creditor? Or would you rather buy shares of stock in the company and be considered an investor? So there's two different ways. If I want to have equity in the company, I could be a creditor or I could be an investor. Let's look at investing activities from the perspective of the company. Uh, investing activities when we buy resources uh, that a company needs to operate. So example of things that we might buy, computers, delivery trucks, furniture, buildings, land, all of that. Uh, it, and I put in parentheses property, plant, and equipment. Those often get labeled under that accounting title, property, plant, and equipment. Uh, these resources owned by a business, uh, the accounting vocabulary word for that are assets. So assets essentially are things the business owns. But typically, you're going to see this also, this word resources. Assets are resources of the company. Investments and uh, investments in other companies are an example of an investing activity for the company uh, as well. So buying assets, whether it's these up here or whether it's investing in another company, all of those are investing activities. Operating activities. Once a business has its assets in place, then it can begin operations. And basically, the main activity would be generating revenues. Revenues are amounts earned from selling products or performing services. Uh, so if I'm an accounting firm, I provide accounting services. That would be my main source of revenue. If I'm a retail store, I sell products or I sell goods. That would be my main revenue, sales revenue. Uh, when we earn or we sell products that will result in receiving assets, uh, typical assets would be inventory or accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is an asset and it represents the right to receive money from a customer as a result of a sale. So for example, if I'm a CPA, uh, if I have my own CPA firm, if I provide tax services to a client, in return, uh, they will owe me money. Uh, and so I will create an account receivable from customer A, let's say, and maybe in two weeks' time, customer A gives me cash, and of course, I no longer will have my account receivable. So the accounts receivable is something I, I, uh, the asset I receive right away from providing goods and services, but when the customer finally pays the cash, then that accounts receivable goes away. Operating expenses, uh, excuse me, operating activities in addition to generating revenues, we're also going to, we will incur expenses in order to generate those revenues. So expenses are the cost of the assets consumed. So it's assets we've used, not assets laying around, but assets that we have actually uh, used or consumed in the businesses or services we've used. Again, the emphasis there is on the past tense being consumed. So if we've uh, selling expenses, marketing expenses, interest, uh, utilities that we have used are expenses, uh, salaries that we have used are expenses, all of, uh, all of those are anything that we've consumed in the business is an expense. Liabilities are something that's created from the expense. Uh, so, uh, if I use utilities, that's an expense, right? I've consumed the, so let's say the electricity, my electricity uh, in my business. I've used the electricity, and uh, the other side of that is that I will owe money. So I'll have a pay, some sort of accounts payable for the electricity, right? So I have the expense on one hand that I've consumed a service, and on the other hand, I have this payable because I owe money. So remember, recall, that liabilities are obligations. Uh, we owe money. for Usually we owe money for a liability. So wages, we would have wage expense because we consume the employee services, but then we also owe the employees money. Sales tax payable, we concern, consume the tax, and now we owe money for it as well. Bottom line is we want to have profits, right, which is called net income. 
Net income is when our revenues exceed our expenses. And net loss is when it's just the other way around. Expenses exceed revenues, and we hope to, that we don't incur net losses. Okay, let's put all of these three business activities together and see it in a big picture sort of way. If I want to get started in business, I'll have the, I can finance with either debt or equity. So I can borrow money from the bank or I could receive equity financing from the owners. If it's a corporation, it's the shareholders. But cash will come in uh, is the main key there. So that cash will come in. And that, again, we're financing the company with either debt or equity. I'm borrowing money or I'm I'm getting cash by issuing ownership to the uh, to the shareholders. In exchange, the company will take that cash and buy assets. That's investing. So we finance the business with finance the business with debt and equity. We take the cash that we receive from that financing and we invest in the various assets of the business. Remember, that's like automobiles, our building, our land, all of those sort of, you know, equipment, all of that are our assets. Then we use the assets, and as we use the assets, those will generate revenue. And again, if our retail store, our main source of revenue is sales revenue from selling our products or our goods. And then we also will incur expenses in generating that revenue. And ultimately, that sales revenue will result in profits, which accountants will call net income. And hopefully, we will have profits or net income. And if we do have net income, that very much satisfies the investors and creditors who will stay with us in that capacity of being an, an investor or creditor. So how it all kind of works together. And this screenshot is something I've created uh, for the course and I think you'll find it very helpful to, to keep this picture in front of you throughout the semester because it really helps you to understand what are the business activities and so on how is the accountant going to create accounting information that will convey about all three of these activities. Uh, let's break this into the three activities while we're here. I'm going to draw my line. First general area is financing. Remember the three business activities. The first one was financing with debt and equity. Then we take the cash from that financing activity and invest in assets. And then the assets and other things as well, well services usually, will be used to generate sales revenue, there are, uh, which sales revenue ultimately will result in profits to the company, which will satisfy the owners. This is the end of this video.